You stirred and groaned softly. Rise and shine. You heard a familiar, soft, muscular voice and hissed when a gleam of light hit your face, causing you to hurriedly turn around and bury your face into a pillow. You try to open your eyes, but it feels like your eyelids are weighed down with bricks. Your head was pounding as if your skull was being hammered by, well, a hammer, of course. You had a headache. It was the annoying kind, and the kind that made you sensitive to everything. Giyu couldn't help but give a amused chuckle. Just as he'd expected, you had a hangover, which he knew for sure would linger throughout most of the day. How are you feeling? He asked, even though he's already knew the answer, but he just wanted to tease you anyways. Like garbage. You drone with a muffled and horsey voice. You can hear his footsteps, slow and methodical, approached you and then felt weight on the futon as Giyu laid down beside you. I apologize for the floor not being comfortable enough, but it'll have to do until you'll get a box spring, Giyu says. You laugh softly as a light-hearted remark since you didn't have the energy to blush. True, it would be nice to sleep on a fluffy, soft mattress, you say, almost dreaming-like. Anyways, I made you some mint tea. Perhaps it'll help be- soothe your headache, he says. The blanket was pulled away from you, and you shivered at the sight and chill as you turned your head slightly, only to hiss softly at the light, now evading the space around you. You whined at the sensitivity, but Giyu soon shielded you with his body oh, Excuse me, as he gently held the teacup against your lips. Once the minty liquid hits your tongue, you immediately gulp it down, and intimately you regard it as your head throbs from the minty, fresh sensitivity. Once finished, you laid back down and let yourself sink into the pillow again and sighed comfortable in your own bed after what feels like an eternity. Giyu settles on his side, watching your chest rise and fall as you breathe. His eyes then lift to see your face, seeing your tied, eyed-colored eyes gaze at the ceiling. It's rather enduring to see you all blunt out. You should be feeling better in no time, Giyu says softly, graciously minding your pounding head right now. You glance at him, those beautiful as your eyes always looking down at you with such love and affection. God, he was beautiful. And the way the morning sun rays casted a halo behind him made him appear angelic. You shallow and suddenly felt incredibly thirsty for some odd reason. Thank you, Kiyo. You smiled lovingly, feeling yourself start to feel a bit better. His hand rests on top of yours and you look at each other, unspoken emotions passing between you. Anything for you. I'll always be here for you, he says, leaning down to press a kiss onto your forehead. You sigh with a loving smile. I love you, you say. His eyes wind slightly, but soon narrow as his gentle smile crosses his lips. I love you too. His remark surprised you a little, but nonetheless, it made your heart flutter. What would I do without him, you wonder briefly. After a moment of peaceful silence, Giyu decided to strike a conversation. Do you remember what happened last night? He uh, he questions, a sly smile g- glancing his lips. Your face grew red. I, I, I didn't act like a fool and embarrass myself in front of Shinobu, did I? He... Oh, you asked shyly. Giyu shook his head before chuckling. No, actually, you were a wonderful hostess. He commented. Really? Oh, what a relief. Although, the part of about smelling and tasting like chocolate was quite amusing he chuckles okay namisama please tell me i didn't you started only for your eyes to whine as giyu tugged his collar revealing the number of um hickeys that littered his neck (gasps) i did that please tell me that's all i did you say slightly panicking and hoping you didn't force yourself upon him last night well You bumping and grinding against me was very tempting, he says. What did you do? You asked again, this time looking away shyly. After a long moment of silence, he finally answered, nothing. I'm surprised you held out and didn't ravish me. If I was that 
rambunctious and eager. You chuckled lightly. You know, I would never take advantage of you like that. However, it wasn't really about what you did, more of what you said. This caught you off guard. What did I say? While I was putting you to bed, you were rambling on and on about how I don't always tell you how much I love you. He exclaims. You also mention how worried and lonely you get when I'm not here with you. At this point, you were so red from embarrassment, your stomach was doing flips, since you had basically drunkenly confessed all of your inner thoughts to him last night. I mean, drunken me wasn't really wrong. I do get worried about you, and how could I not when you're out there risking your life to save people? You muttered. You soon felt Giyu swift and kissed the top of your head again before pulling you closer. You turn and wrap your arms tighter around his waist and mumbled into his chest, Sorry, don't be. It's my fault for being selfish. I didn't mean to make you worry so much. He what? Oh, he wriggles deeper under the blankets with you, wrapping his arms around your body and resting his head against yours. You feel him smile against your forehead kissing you gently once more. As you drift off to sleep, you hear him whisper, I love you, no matter what happens. I'll always love you again. You hadn't expect this outcome with such a situation, but you would gladly take the opportunity to hear him out and say those words yet again. As you smiled and pulled, pulled him closer to you, cuddling into him. I love you too, Tokida. <laughs>